One of my favorite stories of the week was Bernie Shaw's recollection of after doing a brief stint covering the Gulf War, <laughs> came back to D.C., uh, uh, H.W. Sends him, uh, invites him to the White House and says, we were very worried about you. I mean, these things just aren't done anymore. You're right about that. And, you know, in watching this scene unfold today, and apropos of what you just said, I'm reminded that if he were here right now, and, and I know this from my, my 50 years of friendship and association with him, he'd probably be saying, hey, Pete, this is all great, all this pomp and circumstance, but be sure you add a light touch to it because nobody had a greater sense of humor than George H.W. Bush did. And if we get a second here, I'll tell a quick joke that he told his entire life or his entire oh, career virtually. Please. Well, since we're, we're, we're all headed for a church there, he started using this joke when he was a congressman and, and up until he came to Houston. And the joke is this, a little boy's walking into church with his grandmother. And his grandmother says, uh, he, the little boy says to the grandmother, what are all those flags along the way in front of the church? And his grandmother said, why, son, those are in memory of those who died in service. The little boy said, oh, really, the 9 o'clock or the 11 o'clock service? <laughs> now, he, he told that joke his entire career. And I might add, when he was over on the front lines in Saudi Arabia the night before the Gulf War began, he told that joke to the troops there. So uh, that was one he enjoyed telling over the years. And Peter, it reminds us this was a deeply religious, spiritual man who made a point of impressing upon other people. They, sh they don't need to be shy about their faith either. No, you're absolutely right. You know, one other thing that just crossed my mind sitting here watching these scenes is that he once told me that right after he graduated from Yale, in his first job interview, uh, he was turned down for the position. He didn't get the job. And I won't mention the company, but we'd all recognize the name. What and kind of said, company? Was it, was well, it financial services or are we talking about oil? No, 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 none of those. Uh, he said that, 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 that having had that happen to him, and I'm now a filling an endowed teaching chair at Sam Houston State University, so I pass this on to students as encouragement. He said being turned down in that first job interview, he said to himself, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get in a Studebaker and drive to Odessa, Texas with my wife <laughs> and get in the oil business. And it, it, just think if, if he hadn't been turned for, just think if he hadn't been turned found, down for that job, we, none of us might be sitting here today. Yeah, but how many people would have gone down to Odessa, taken their newlywed <laughs> bride, you know, and, 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 and as I understand it, there was nobody down there uh, at this time. It's nothing like it looks today after the oil boom. Of, of course not. But then what, look what that led to. He got to a point there in the early 60s where he decided he was looking around for a new challenge in life. And what was it? It was entering the political arena. Do you know about those about his politics back in those days when it, I, I read some reference to him insisting he wanted to run as a Republican so that Texas could be a two party state? <laughs> well, that's right. In those days, Texas was a one party state. It was a Democrat state. So you have to give him credit for sticking his neck out. And, and he first sought public office here in 1964, which was a landslide year for President Johnson. Uh, so he, he, as he used to say, he often, I often heard him say over the years, you know, sometimes in life, you just have to take on the tough ones and mm -hmm. do what's right, not what's expedient for you and your career. But what's, what's the right thing to do? And if you look at his career, he had many ups and downs. A lot of people say, oh, George Bush had it made. No, he didn't. Uh, he, he faced a lot of tough challenges in various jobs uh, he was in. And I would just add this one on that. In 1974, when he was serving as chairman of the Republican National Committee, committee and I might add during Watergate, what a thankless job during hmm. Watergate, he gave uh, some pretty serious thought to coming back to Texas and running for governor at that time. And finally one day we were sitting in a car out at National Airport in Washington and he, he turned to me and he just said, Pete, I just can't do that. He said, that I've got to do the right thing and the right thing is to hang in here and, and do this job here during a very tough time. Now, you know, the expedient thing probably would have been to come to Texas and run for governor. But he felt that he, was, he, he just could not abandon that position at that time. And I think that speaks volumes about the kind of conviction he had as a person.